Yay! Okay, now we're actually live. Thank goodness. Magic. That was amazing. Yay. Thank you so much for stopping into the uh, Kick It With Chris podcast. I am Chris. A uh, little bit of plugging and promotion first. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Kick It With Chris. You can check us out on Facebook, The Book of Faces. That's Kick It With Chris. We've got Twitter. We've got TikTok. I've never used TikTok, but I'm sure I'm going to eventually. Um, and we're also on, what was it, John? It was Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Officially. Officially. I just learned that today. I hadn't even known that. Yep. But yep. <laughs> we're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Yep. Isn't that exciting? My guest yep. today, I've got Derek. Hi. Yay. How's it going? Not too bad. I've uh, I've had the, I think, laziest day. No, yesterday was the laziest day. I had a day off work and I nice. didn't leave the damn house, man. Oh, man. No, it was, it was like... Part of me felt really guilty about it. Like, part of me was like, oh, my God, you have to contribute to the world in some way. Yeah, but, but then do you really I was like, you know, I enjoy this. Like, I <laughs> spent so much time on the couch. I walked my dog. I lounged with my cat. And I was like, that's the fuck all I want to do. That's, that's all you need it. to do, really. I mean, yeah. I don't know anybody shit. So. Exactly. I don't. I really <laughs> don't. But then today I was like, I woke up. Or what? Okay, so I was telling you earlier, like, my ex-boyfriend's staying with me right now. Yeah. And uh, we, like, he woke up. I could hear him. He woke up at, like... A reasonable time, like a normal person time, 8 a.m. or something like that. Yeah. And then uh, came back and was like, are you just going to, are you sleeping? And I was like, yes, no, that's my plan. Yeah. And so I slept until noon. Oh, my God. I know. I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I can't even, my body won't even let me do that. Oh, it do was, you wake yeah, up early? I do because my, you know, other, I'm just always working. So, yeah. Right. I'm, I'm up early. What really time early. does your body wake you up uh, at? 5.30. Usually, usually. Stop it. Like every day, every day. No. Yeah, regardless of I'm up till, you know, whatever, three. No, you know. no, 5.30, yeah. no way. Yeah, I know. It's ungodly. What time <laughs> do you usually go to bed at? Like, I mean, if if it's good, maybe like 10, 30, 11, maybe. But this, but I mean. That is it, wild. It's really like a give or take on what I'm doing the night before, right? Oh, no man, I'd love to sleep in. I know, but I have ADHD, so it kind of works out. Like, oh really? <laughs> I, I, yeah. Are you on some yeah. good shit for it? No, not anymore. Really? No, they, the, the, the meds weren't working for me, but oh. I was diagnosed with it. So it's, I don't know. I just concluded that I just got to keep busy and have three jobs or whatever. I'm still rocking the Adderall. <laughs> I rock the nice. Adderall. Oh yeah, it's fun. Nice. I, nice. I just met somebody the other day that was like, mm, I'm on Vyvanse or no, no, it was Dexedrine, and I was like, oh, the Cadillac of amphetamines. The Cadillac. Well, Offensive. Excuse me. <laughs> Bloody da. No, I'm just on the boring ass Adderall, but uh, uh, but yeah, it's it's helpful. But I can't believe you wake up that early. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. And what do you do when you wake up that early? Like, do you wake up that early on a weekend? I, no, 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 no. I try to I try to sleep. In on weekends yeah but, but uh really like i you know my day job i go i mm. go in there pretty early but i'm not one of those morning people that you know wakes up an hour before either i just get up and go to work my dude like, i, just... I ha hate mornings mm -hmm. i really to the core Preach. of Preach. my body with everything i'm made of hate the fucking morning i don't it's, know why i i get yeah yeah just skip the morning altogether. I just Go like, I, I don't know. I can't rev myself up. I cannot get myself in a good mood. I'm miserable first yeah, thing in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And Especially then, without coffee. Yeah. And then there will be like, like <laughs> when you're like, when you're like dating somebody who's like a morning person, they sleep over or something like that. <laughs> they wake and up and they're like, they're all happy or something like that. Or God forbid. Okay. Let me just, let me just put this out there for the world right now. The world, the audience that we have. The world. God forbid morning sex i'm just gonna say it no, i agree it's do you i agree okay because most dudes don't well because guys are always horny yeah but, know. you know but like but i mean for me I'm, i got dragon sorry sorry but yeah yeah exactly going on. i'm, so, I'm uh, disgusting yeah, just, let me yeah. shower let me wake up let me have groggy. some coffee yeah, yeah, yeah exactly i hate like i oh man there's no. nothing worse than that and i yeah. feel like i'm speaking on behalf of females when i say that because like no chick wants to be bugged in the morning with a dick sorry <laughs> well she, no like, it's true it's true yeah stop it's bothering like, me with your dick just waking up you're like oh I don't need that. Yeah, get out of here. Just like it's offensive, but uh, but yeah. So, anyways, I'm glad you wake up so early. That's. <laughs> uh, but I'm not a happy morning. I, it's not a yay. Yeah. No, it's like a. Do you have like? Do you have responsibilities in the morning? Like you don't have kids or wives or. No, no, no. I no, no. Wives, yeah. <laughs> wives. Do you have plural? I have a couple wives. of wives. Yeah, I gotta feed them all before they work. <laughs> gotta feed them all. No. <laughs> Cook them eggs, and pancakes. 
No, I'm no. sorry to all the, the sister wives out there. That wasn't meant to be offensive. No, exactly. <laughs> but no. you don't have to like wake up no. for, for like priorities. Like... No, no. It's just wake up, go straight to work. Ew. So, yeah. Ew, no. but, you know. What time do you start work at? 6.30. So it's, yeah, it's, yeah, I yeah. can't with that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's, you know, and then on weekends, it's, you know, work till 6.30. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. But you said you have a woofer, right? You have a little woof woof? I do, I do, I do. That's a, a priority. You yeah, wake yeah up well, for that. she is. She's, you know, Queen Paltis. Or, Paltis is her name? No, her, her name is Quinn. But Quinn? she's got the many names, like Queen Paltis. Oh, right. Of the Paltis tribe. <laughs> you know, you make all these names up, or I'll call her Mrs. Jones for some reason. I don't and know. you said she has a little chihuahua, right? Yeah, a little chihuahua, purebred apple head. I so. am terrified of chihuahuas. They're I, that's scary fair, ass that's dogs. Fair. They are. This one's more like a lap dog. She's, oh, really? She's really like, yeah, she, she used to play catch and stuff right before she got diseases or whatever. Right. Uh, yeah, she used to play catch and like everybody's like, what's going on with this chihuahua? Usually all of them are mean as hell. They're scary as yeah, hell. Yeah, like yeah. when we get chihuahuas at the shelter that I work at, I'm like, I please, I like beg. I'm That's like, funny. no, not me. Like I will take, I will gladly take a foaming at the mouth, rotting, oh, yeah, yeah. mastiff, angry yeah. ass dog before a chihuahua any day of the week. Wow, well, they're, they're like the alpha of the small, they got the little dog syndrome. Well, the, the difference is, and this is like, this is, I learned this like through canine behaviorism. The difference is, is that we love like we love a growl in when it comes to dogs we love a growl cuz a, when a when you get a growl from a dog what does that mean that means get uh, you're about to be bitten yeah right that yeah. means get out of my space or i don't like what you're doing or whatever the case is yeah. like back it off right but yeah. We don't usually get a growl from a smaller dog because they're so small. It's a big it's a world. Surprise attack! They it just they just go yeah. for the bite, right? Yeah. They just go for the bite. I remember, like when I was at Arcs, we and and anybody that has been at Arcs will know this story. It's like too well. We had this intake of how many? I think it was like sixteen or seventeen min pins, like a miniature pincher. You know yeah. those little guys? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and these min pins came in from, I believe it was a hoarding situation. It was kind of a sad thing, but a lot of them were like they were kind of like inbred, like they were just not all there, like in the uh. head. And um, so they were they're small dogs, and I hate small dogs. I'm so scared of small dogs. And we had to like go into this ISO room. And we have like 16 min pins in there and they're all like so angry. Like they're just pissed to be there. I had to wear the bike gloves with so many of them because I was terrified of them. Uh, and I was like, oh, my God, this is the worst day of my yeah. life. Like yeah. anybody that was at ARGS during that was like nodding along being like, yeah, that was the fucking worst. That was oh, the man. worst. Yeah. Uh, I got lucky. My, mine honestly just it's the such only a thing good she dog. doesn't like is like small kids that's oh really yeah she no gets, me like, neither nervous yeah. Around. Yeah, i get it fair. yeah I totally but understand. yeah my my nor she'll do is come up to you and twerk at you or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> she'll, she'll, she'll just do a little dance for you and then probably sleep on you that's not bad yeah. that's yeah. all right yeah. okay so She's tell great. me about anyway. this uh this early ass morning job i want to know about that you said uh, you work in the airline industry. yes yes i work i worked in aviation my whole life um so started really young uh, you know trying to get in my, my, I'm like the third gen. My, oh, really? My dad's did it. My grandpa did it. And so for a long time, I, I worked on the shop floor, like actually structures, like building okay. the, the airplanes from scratch or whatever. Just you know. build, just building airplanes. Just building airplanes. You know, I've cool. had a couple of people, exes, go, you know, build me a plane someday. Cool. Yeah, right, okay, brother. Yeah. Right that, sure. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah. Uh, so I built them for the longest time and then only up until about two, two and a half years ago. Um, the place I work at now, Field Aviation, they asked me, uh, they're like, you know what? You know a lot about this. Let's start getting you planning, you know, up front. So now I have an office job. Oh, wow. Is, yeah, yeah, which is awesome. Doing what? Uh, so, like, uh, I'm a planner. So, basically, from, like, customers such as, you know, I, you know, bigger customers like airlines for Dash 8 parts and stuff, they'll send me what they want us to build. And then it's my job to basically decipher what they exactly they want and then tell the shop floor how to build it. What? Yeah. So, That's so such they'll a send big us, boy yeah. job. <sighs> You're a big boy. Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> You've Thank got you. like a whole job and stuff. That's pretty wild. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, I know. It's a it's a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yeah, impressive. It's, it's cool. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's not your every day. I mean, I, again, it's, I mean, even during that, I built like drones and stuff like that for yeah. the military. So it's, I've been doing it a lot. You know, Just building last. drones for the Just military. Just building, you know, Not a Tony big Stark. deal. Yeah, yeah. So no, how did you, okay, so wait, hold on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, how old are you? Yes. Uh, well, I already actually think I know oh, 35. 
36. 36. Yeah, okay. So yeah. you're 36 and you have uh, built you have built drones for the military already. Yes. Yes. With my, with my dad's company. With your dad's company. Yeah. yeah. And it's it was uh still that's a company wild. based out of, out of uh, Medicine Hat. Okay. So we built them in Airdrie and then we'd ship them to Medicine Hat. I had no idea that that was happening in Airdrie. It's happening. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's happening. Drones and for it, the military. So they they'd take our drones, they'd fire them up in the air and then um They'd get blown out of the sky, basically. Really? Uh, they'd test all their Where did you send them it. to? Uh, Suffield. Uh, Where's that? It's just just outside of Medicine Hat. Oh, so for training a, and stuff like training, that? For training, yeah. For yeah. training purposes. And, and then some of the other drones they'd actually send out to the Pacific and just kind of... Because, you know, those big cruise liners with the big dome guns or whatever? Sure. That's, they'd, well, yeah. they'd, they're all computered. And so they, they'd fire the... Our, it was called the Vindicator Project. They'd fire them off the um, the ships, and then these domes would track where it, how it's flying, and then kind of just like go, eh, eh, and then go, Poof, and then all of a sudden, like the thing just bursts into pieces or whatever. And I was asked my dad, I'm like, does not hurt? I was like, gonna say, does it does break it your hurt? heart a little bit? Because it's like all our hard work. And he goes, no, I just see a big dollar sign go, because ah. they need more. <laughs> That's so, so true. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it was it was fun and interesting. Yeah, definitely different. Have you lived in Calgary your whole life? No, I I've lived in a couple places. I. I Originally born and raised in Winnipeg, uh, then yeah. <laughs> Why are you, 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 you could tell. You could tell. I, used, I lived. I in look like a Winnipegger. Oh, John lived in Winnipeg. Oh, really? I thought you were just uh, like. Yeah. I thought Brother. you were like, ha, ah, that sucks. So, so <laughs> go, you can't Jets, go Jets. Go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Born and raised in Winnipeg. <laughs> His laugh was so are you north inappropriate. End? <laughs> are you North End or? Were you North End, John? North End? I'm. What's that? <laughs> okay. Liar, Tindall you didn't Park. live in Winnipeg. Tindall Park, Garden Grove area. That's where I was no, from. No, I used to work in a restaurant, uh, you know, like the Corridon, the Corridon Avenue? Corridon Avenue? Okay, I had it. You know, like, it's been a couple you know, of years, but. You know, like Osborne? Yeah, yeah, Osborne, Osborne yeah, that area. Yeah. yeah. You know, like Bar Italia? Um, Do you remember it's like in the corner? Is it in by the confusion corner, whatever it's called? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. A confusion so, corner. Yeah, exactly. That's what we called it. We yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, Anyways. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, from there. <laughs> so you're from Winnipeg. Yeah, and then Calgary, and then I moved to Vancouver for six, seven years, and I moved back. Where'd you live in Vancouver? Kitsilano. Right downtown? Okay, oh, then, excuse me. Well... Lottie fucking died. I didn't live there long. I ran out of money. So, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> like everybody. No <laughs> but, kidding. It's so I was talking to my buddy actually not long ago, like how expensive it is. He has got this like one bedroom kind of like downtown ish, but not in like an ideal situation. It's not like nice or newly renovated. He's paying fifteen hundred dollars a month. It's insane. They rent out closets like as rooms. Dude, as rooms. Yeah. Just, you know, I mean, I'm sure it's It's like crazy. That in a lot of other places it's too, insane. But, so yeah. you came back to Calgary just yeah, to yeah. survive. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I I moved to Vancouver to do like the whole band thing. I was in a band called Inside It Failed. Okay. And we we were getting into like I was, again, I was doing aviation there building twin otters and I kept taking time off work to do touring. Right. And eventually my boss like, you know, you're starting to like not be here at right. all. And he's like, do you just want to like not be here anymore? I'm like, <laughs> you're right. I don't. I, quit. I don't. I don't feel like I, I'm going to go on anymore. tour. Yeah. And so I just kind of, we did that tour thing for a while and then burned out. And I was like, man, okay, I got to come back. Okay. So <laughs> now I want to wiggle into the music thing. Sure, so sure. how did you get into, cause that's your, that's why you're here. And that's why we're here to promote. Yes, yes. How did you get into music through bands? Like through playing in bands? Uh, originally? Yeah. Like I've been a musician for, I mean, all my life. What do you play? I'm, or what do you I, I'm a singer. Are you a band. vocalist? Yeah, I'm a vocalist. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 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 Who would you compare yourself to? Oh uh, man. I knew this was coming. Oh, really? I, I'd say uh, some people say I sound like Corey Taylor. Okay, cool, cool, Slipknot. cool. Um, you don't have a neck like him, though. Thank God. He scares me. His giant ass neck is he's, terrifying. And, he, and he's got the tiny frame, yeah. too. So he's got, yeah, just he's all neck. He is. But yeah, but yeah. So uh, Corey, Corey, Taylor. Corey Taylor. or I've heard uh, like my scream is kind of like Chad Gray from Mudbane. Um, oh, really? Yeah, but I, I don't know. I Does also that make you feel like uncomfortable to compare yourself to? A little I mean, bit, yeah, because yeah. these are like really, really up there. But I also am a singing voice, kind of like stained Aaron Lewis a little bit too. I love Aaron Lewis. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while since it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. There you go. Shut up. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Did you really need to do that? <laughs> <sighs> it's weird to, I don't know how I would handle that question who do you compare yourself to because you're gonna have judgment right do you away. feel like you're being self-flattering by answering that question or, like are you a good singer are you allowed to say that tell me are you a good singer i can pull it off no don't say that i can pull it off 
That's all. I can do it. Are That's you being I, modest? We have no room for modesty on this show. No, I, I am. I'm. I mean, I better be. I've been doing it 25 <laughs> years now. I better I, be. <laughs> well, I mean, if I if I I should just quit by now, if you know. But yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm good enough that other people have told me that I've, I'm good, and you know, I. Judge is that how you measure? And... I wonder. Like, this is kind of an existential question, but like, is that how you measure self talent? Is based on like what people tell you? Like, how do you? How would you measure? Because when it comes to like my former job, like I would only measure my talent based on like my the reception from other people. Like, is that how it is in music? Yeah, like, yeah the same way. Do I you mean, just you've... have a generally like this intuitive feeling like I am good or no? Uh. Yeah, but I'm I'm also really humble and like try not to be too overconfident because then you gotta commit. right. But um, yeah, no, it's it's a combo of people telling me that I'm good, but also what I can pull off because I'm always I'm one of those like obsessive people that you know challenges themselves right. all the time. So like when I go home, I'm gonna probably write music just because and probably do a song that I hate just to make it my <laughs> bitch. You know what I mean? Like. So I don't know. It's it's kind of maybe it's a rebellious thing to try and prove myself wrong and other people wrong. Because, you know, there's when you're, for example, you're in a band, you get music sent to you and you're like, well, I don't know this song I love. So I'm going to write to this song. But then you always have the one song that the band really enjoys. And they're like looking at you like you done those lyrics yet. Oh, really? You done? OK. So then I'm like. <sighs> <laughs> Do no. I have to? Yeah. And so, and I do it, and then I end up making it my bitch, like I said. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't jive with you. Mm-hmm. I got it. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I don't know. so how long have you played in bands for? Like your whole like my whole life. Like whole I said, life, yeah. it went from Winnipeg to Calgary, and then Vancouver was inside. It failed, and then um, I came back to Calgary. I played with a band called uh, Silo for a while Silo, too. Silo, right? Who is okay. who is quite well known around. Calgary, and we opened for Buck Cherry and played, you know, bigger shows for them. And Why the name Silo? Like I, I didn't come up with it. I, I replaced their singer. On, um, you know, I got his. Did you ever and... figure out what it meant? Like, is it a grain silo? Is that what? They're... I don't know. Maybe it had something to do with Calgary and like the <laughs> the yeah the landscape or something. But I never asked it. But yeah, that's funny. It was, it was, they were they were cool guys. And they, yeah, you know, I've been pretty fortunate that way because they were all you know right in the scene as well. And uh, it's really difficult. Like for a while, I kind of did my solo stuff as well, and it's just not the same as being in a no. band, right? And I think, um, I think like, again, I'm, I'm in a new band now, which I was fortunate enough. I, I, when I put the word out there that I was looking again, I said, I wanted to join a band that's already like established, you know, cause starting from scratch, like I said, I'm 36. So right. Uh, I ain't got much time left. <laughs> you know, I better get on that famous train. <laughs> well, are you, here's the question for you. Are you trying to, and this is, this will probably be a very insulting question. My favorite kind. Are you trying to take over the world world with your music or are you just trying to do something with your time? No, not right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, in like the early 20s, I might have had that mindset like, For you know sure. what? There are going to be millions that feel my shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> fuck that X, you know, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You're going to hear me one day, <laughs> you know. But uh, I mean, I, I still have that drive, but it's more to make me happy. Exactly. It's like a way to spend your time. And is that is that a tough thing as somebody who's into music? Is that a tough thing to come to terms with? Is that like, yes, I'm not going to take over the world anymore. Absolutely. Like, I mean, I took a break for about five years because, you know, music wasn't going where I thought it would be going. Right. Of course. And that's when, you know, reality hits you like man, this, you know, if I haven't made it by now, maybe I should like get a job or something, you know, (laughs) do something. And, you know, there's this internal battle for years. And the thing I realized about this, you know, joining this new band is that eventually it just, it pulls you back in whether you want it or not. Yeah. It it really does. I I spent years telling people, you know, I, you know, Doc, my name is Doc or whatever you've seen. And like, Doc, can you do this for me? You know, can you be a guest vocalist here? And I said, nope, no, I'm done. No, I'm done. And just, I don't know what happened this year. I was just like, you know what? I'm, I'm back. I'm, yeah, I'm back, bitches. You know, so I, I don't know. Okay, you say that your name is Doc in yeah. the scene. D- uh, have you ever come across somebody with a really douchey music name, like one that just made you cringe? Like, is oh the, the, man, like has there ever been one that you're like, oh, no. there was one guy named Pesk. I was like, why Pesk? Why Pesk? Why I don't know if he was like pesky. Um, <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, yeah, you hear some and you're like, huh, huh. Yeah. But I think the whole reason I picked Doc is because like in the club and stuff when I was younger, they'd be like, you're a doctor. I'm like, yes, hi, nice to meet you. Oh. You know, like, there you go. There you I, go. And it originally stemmed from D Rock, and then people got lazy. I just said Doc. So. D Rock was it? Oh, yeah, like Derek, you know, like the whole you know Derek D Rock. Yeah, D Rock. 
<laughs> so yeah, it kind of evolved into that. I wonder what my music, my douchey music name would be. K Riss. K Riss. What would I change it to then? Mm. Risky. Risk. Risk factor K. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> God, <laughs> that reminds me of so many exes of mine. Like, with because like, I I used to they date like musicians. No, and I'm like, like when I've dated a musician and they've come up and they've told me like my name is like like we share and we won't name him, but we share a mutual friend. Well, I I don't consider a friend, but did you know his like music name? No, I oh, oh wait a minute. Based on a book. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, I forgot about that. Uh, yes. Yeah. Gross, right? <laughs> like it's just ew, yeah. it's hateable. Yeah. It's I so mean I've, I've had a couple bad ones too though. What? Yeah. Uh, Twist was no. Bad. Yeah, I know no. that was bad. No. Uh, people started calling me Sonic for a while. Why? I don't know why. Uh, these, these like kid names. <laughs> kid names, you know, like baby names. I'm like what the? I don't know. And I just accepted it for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and you came up with your own. Doc well, is fine. Doc is like a that's a nice name. It's like, it's, it's it's short. Simple. It's simple. not douchey. And everybody has to throw in a what's up, Doc. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of worked out. Okay, yeah. tell me about YYC Music Awards. How'd you get involved? I got involved, um, like I said, our mutual friend Shannon. Shannon, yeah. Shannon, um, Shannon Ambrose, love her. Yeah, yeah. She's she's great. She's she's the publicist for for them. And mm. um, she remembered I uh, a few years back, I worked for um Sin Agency, okay. uh, Leanne Harrison. And she um she booked tours and whatever, and we also judged uh, Road to Indie Week competitions at like you know, for bands to go to Toronto. Cool. And so I guess she'd remembered that I'd been doing that a long time and, you know, been still involved in industry. And I guess they were, since they're changing things up after COVID, I mean, they used to be live in person and now they they were online the last two years. Right. And so their idea was to The know, music awards, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I, I guess they want to bring it back, of yeah. course. And um, like, who's still doing production? And that's kind of, well, Hotels Live is still doing stuff. Right, right. So right. I'm, you know... She she contacted me and was like, "Hey, you know, we're we really would like your help on this. And since you're still active during a pandemic, right? Would you like to help?" And so I was like, "Yeah, hell yeah, I would. I've, I've been to a bunch of them as well, and they're they're great. It's you know the recognition of our city and the talent in it. So it is yeah. really cool to to recognize musicians in our city. It's cool that we have those awards at all because like I can't I know. think of a lot of cities that would like. And I've heard of YYCMA like a bunch of times, mm -hmm. even even though like I'm not a musician and I'm not really in the industry. Like it's it's very it's very kind of established. It's it's uh, yeah, and it's it's still growing. I mean, it's kind of most of you know as you know, Calgary is mostly known for country artists and the CCMAs, yeah, and yeehaw, as, yeah. et cetera, EHA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which I'm not really involved in a lot of it, but, no. um, yeah, the YYC awards is kind of like the broader of all the music and it's only going to get bigger as, you know, music expands and things open again. So when are the awards next? The next, I don't really know exactly. We're still planning yeah. for that. Um, uh, we are, we, we're in the process of that, but I, we just opened submissions. Um, I was going to say, how yeah. would people get involved with them um, and be recognized? Um, so right now is like uh, YYCMusicAwards.com. Mm -hmm. um, it, it opened March 1st. And so bands can submit, you know, their music and upload their stuff to there. And, you know, the board and everybody kind of grabs, gathers it all together. And yeah. uh, then we, we also have like a separate company outside that comes in and, you know, it's, it's like a very unbiased kind of judgments. Towards sure. Them. So it's not just like the same people. Um, so it's, 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 yeah, that's, that's how we do it. And, um, so if yeah, I were it's a band, like if I were just a band in Calgary or a musician in Calgary and I wanted to be acknowledged for something or I wanted to just get involved in this in some way, like I, I would just go to the website yeah, and just go to the website, uh, upload your shit. music. Yeah. Yeah. Your, yeah. Like your EPK or whatever you have. Um, I'm, pretty sure there's some you know standards like you know professional photos that we probably have to sure. upload, you know your bio etc yeah uh, like like you're submitting for a show or management or whatever okay. so uh, but even even bands with just a recording can submit really it's all that's cool it's open to anybody and so. who who is do you know who's like the judges panel like do you know not who, yet I, not i'm yet? not sure yeah and like i said i think i believe it's um outside of just the board yeah uh, so i i again i can't confirm that. That's cool. Do you like doing that? I just, this is my first year. This is your first year? Yeah. So I'm not, yeah, we, I haven't done it yet. Um, when the time comes that we do bring it back live, I'll be the guy on the floor running around with his head cut off. <gasps> oh my God. That's, that's going to be you, I guess. That's, that's production. You know that everybody's like, who's that guy running 
running back around, forth, running like, around. Yeah, that's me. It's it's gonna be tough for you because you're so social. You're gonna want to stop to talk to everybody. Are, hey, doc, you know, it's yeah, like, I want, one sec. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Do you think you'll be able to handle? Do you think you'll yeah. be able to manage yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what? I, again, I learned I learned a ton from doing this hotels live thing. Yes. Like, and that's really what kind of made me go. You know, maybe I can handle that. And so you know. tell me about hotels live. I think hotels yeah. live is one of the coolest things to come to our city in a long time. Like, oh, I think it man, is it's so cool. So innovative, and I'm so stoked to like talk about it just because like um rob sirnowski and leslie sirnowski are the ones who run it shout out yeah um they um they put to, like like i was saying he's a ta- they're town buyer buyers for like other venues in town and he he told me that he's like i, I really need you know to innovate this kind of because shows are shut down nobody can do anything during covid mm-hmm. and he's he's just a very quick on the fly kind of thinker and he's like well what if what is allowed in this city he's like well drive-ins are still allowed sure so yeah. what he did was he t- he partnered up with um rise calgary um hotels um i forget get their all their names but he partnered up with um rise up calgary and uh, the hotels association and basically he um works with the hotels and he turned them into a drive-in model so for example we we have two locations uh the delta hotels and the ramada downtown yeah um and what we because everybody's on their own private balcony it's like their own it's private COVID booth friendly. you can limit the amount of people it's so exciting because i get a free show i live right over here oh did you see oh I get a okay free that's show awesome yeah we have people time. like standing yeah. outside looking and stuff i remember like when it was the hip one and i or was it gino no it was the hip yeah. and um yeah they're awesome I, it yeah, was yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. what was that band I, I can't remember their name, but they, they are were, unbelievable. Yeah, I think they're from Ontario. They're or, unbelievable. Yeah. But I was like, I came home from the shelter, I think, and uh, I was like, what the fuck is happening outside of my building? Like, is that I lived. The hip? Yeah, I was like, that's <laughs> so on par. Like, that was so good. Yeah. And I opened my bedroom window and I went to sleep with the concert fucking playing oh, in my bedroom awesome. it was it so like you're like, cool oh, yes music and i was again, like i was live. very alarmed I, I remember like before the show started there were like spotlights being tested and stuff and i, I was like texting my my boyfriend at the time i was like something's going on at this hotel down the street from me like something weird is happening like i think the police are out there with spotlights and yeah. he was like no i don't think that could no, that was the ramada one right? that was the ramada yeah, yeah and well, i was like oh, I, I guess, it's just a show oh it's awesome yeah and i mean although i didn't do a lot of the actual setting up of like the stage and stuff yeah. i was still the guy that kind of well my main job at night was a little bit of security so i kept people because they have that rooftop pool sure oh, and you'd yeah. also get people from like when they're drunk the watching yeah Oh and no! I get so many people. Uh, huh? Okay, so for huh? somebody that doesn't know what Hotels Live is, it is yes. a concert that happens on like, like either the courtyard of the of the Delta, right? Um, or sorry, well, the Delta. The Delta has like an atrium. They have an atrium, yeah, building. this little um, section. But like yeah. at the Ramada, it's on the pool deck. Yes. yes. And people can watch from their hotels. Yes. So like awesome. they they go on their balcony of their hotel room and they're watching this fucking concert and it's COVID friendly. Yes, which is it, the and, coolest thing, and it's thing. BYOB. It's, yeah, you know, and man, the hotels treat you like gold. It's the coolest it's idea. So You're awesome. watching a concert from your own little balcony. Yes. It's like being in a box. Well, when you when you rent out like a hotel room with a bunch of friends on vacation stuff, you think about how fun that is. Like, yeah, amplify that by a group of people. Just they're all separate because they're following it's the rules. Such a fun idea. Who yeah. like that? Who I, was it that came uh, up? Rob with that? Sirnowski. And That's Le- so Les smart. Sirnowski. Yeah, they. Oh, they're they're brilliant. That's with so that. smart. And yeah, I was so thankful that because when we when we opened up the second location at the Delta Hotel in the atrium, they needed like this, sorry, they needed uh, they needed um, separations between balconies because they didn't have clear sure. borders. So I, I was the one who put up all the barriers in between like the splash guards from oh, people okay. and stuff. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing because we kept going through that entire pandemic. We did over 72 shows and mm-hmm. like all, not one case reported. Just because over of how, 72 shows yeah, here in Calgary? In Calgary, all like mostly cover bands. We had some original ones like a yeah. year ago and you know, a, a couple other local talents opening for, for like, but mainly we booked it was um, cover bands. And uh, the one I really enjoyed was uh, Cirque de la Nuit. Um, so it's okay. like a Cirque du Soleil show, but oh, inside, yeah. So we had like fire throwers and like hoop, like people like flipping on hoops. Like, oh, really that's high, wild. Does juggling. that ever give you anxiety though? Oh yeah. I'm like, I what? Guess, There's especially yeah. like I'm standing next to the fire, like the 
people who put out the fire after, I'm like, you guys are going to be on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're not drunk right now because when he, when he says, he, you know. It the, gives me such anxiety to like, um, to watch Cirque du Soleil. I've been to only one of them before and I was like, I can't handle this. Uh, this is fucking too much for me. Like, oh. But they're so pro when you see it. I know. You're like, man, like you've obviously practiced. It's like, amazing. They, yeah. they did. I think they worked with Shambhala and all that kind of oh. stuff. So, <laughs> you know, they're, they're used to it. And, yeah. Shut it so down. You, down. So you've done this 70 something times. How, what was your favorite performance? Was it that one, do you think? Definitely the Cirque de la Nuit yeah. was great. Um, I, I enjoyed the Guns N' Roses tribute band we did. I did too, uh, from my house. We, did you yeah. see? Okay, yeah. They also played the Delta. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. they had dancers on the That's pole so cool. and stuff. Yeah, that was rad. Um, we had BCDC recently. Um, I think they did. Oh, uh, yeah. They're from... Um, I can't remember if it's Saskatchewan or whatever, but that was a rowdy crowd. Yeah. They, people were, and that was when people were kind of getting over COVID. It was mm. recent, you know, they're like, ah, no more masks, no more. And we were checking QR codes to be safe, right? Sure. But, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, that was a rowdy crowd. It depends on the band, really, though. I mean, we had ABBA and Fleetwood Mac uh, tribute bands. and they, Where was the Fleetwood Mac one? That was at the Delta. The Hotel. Delta. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, That's yeah. cool. The ones at Ramada, we also we had Dallas Smith at the Ramada. Oh, really? He, yeah, he oh, played like cool. a benefit show and that was there was tons of country artists there. And nice. It was, packed. it was awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's so much yeah. fun. Yeah. So what's coming up for Hotel Zive? Well, the uh, next one is March 26th, Saturday. And oh, yeah, you're going to tell me who yes. it is. Who is it? Yes. Um, that is a Rolling Stones <gasps> band. Yes. And that's that's going to go out with a bang. That's Which yeah. one is it at? Uh, that one's at the Delta Hotel. Oh, I won't be yeah. able to hear it from my house. Yeah. Damn it. I'm going to have to actually yeah, go. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. Um, but these, these shows normally do sell out. So Yeah, get, get your tickets yeah, for now. sure. So, hotelslive.ca. Yeah. Hotelslive.ca yeah. yeah. is where you get your tickets. Yeah. Oh, my God. That would be a really yeah. good show. Yeah, it's... it's, have it's you, who's this band? Do you know? I, I do not know. But I, I've seen the comments as soon as the they were announced. Yeah. I, I looked at all the comments and people were like, oh, my God. This sounds exactly like Mick. He no is way. a replica of Mick. And most of these bands, you wouldn't know the difference. Like, we just had clean, uh, Queen Flash come in and it was a Queen right. tribute. I'm like, this guy better pull this off. Yeah, no you kidding. Know, you cannot mess. And oh, I was, they they dressed up, they, you know, they did everything to a T and I was like, man, you know, you close your eyes, you're like, it's, yeah. it's like being there. It's you like know, being I'm, right there. I'm way yeah. too young to experience that, but yeah, it's, well, I'm not that young. What, <laughs> what is your, like, do you have a favorite band? I, I have a couple. Well, uh, like, I come from the new metal era. New metal. So you would, can guess. Is there a band that you would feel insulted to hear a cover of if they screwed it up well yeah or like, did a bad job then you're like you better fucking watch it like probably corner slipknot i'm really picky about that. imagine if somebody had the audacity to be a slipknot cover band well a you'd have to have nine members yeah to exactly. even you know and then yeah oh man yeah to imagine ruin that is yeah I, it's because it's, it's already a wall like, of noise like exactly they, they make it not but yeah if Oh man, that would be. That's how I feel about the Chili Peppers. If somebody like I've heard people cover oh, yeah, the yeah. Chili Peppers before, and I've like just foamed at the mouth with anger. Like, how dare you? Who what, are what you? What was bad about them? Would you say like the like singer uh, the, vocals, the... Oh, the vocals, the yeah. vocals, and uh, and just the general tone of it, the energy of it. I'm like, how could you? Who do you think you are? Yeah, because the Chili Peppers put on a show, man. Oh, they put on they a kind hell of, of a show. Were they kind of like. They're all about it. Like they're oh. they're insane, and so like yeah. So you you got to be like suck my kiss. Yes, you, know? yes, you got to be exactly. you know you got to be in there. Yeah, <laughs> that's so exciting. Okay, yeah. so we've got hotels live. Yeah. So the chili or sorry, the Chili Peppers, the Rolling Stones cover band that's is coming, coming to up. hotels yeah. live. That's yeah. exciting. March twenty sixth. YYC Music Awards are coming up as well. Yes, yes. Uh, I believe that's later in the fall. So, later in the fall. So the submissions just open for that. What else should we plug while you're here? Oh man, um, I mean those are the. Th the three main things. I mean, the last thing is that I'm, like I said, I'm in a new band that's yeah. coming up. So who are there? We just came up with the name, and it has nothing to do with my name. I hope but it's it not is, hateable. It is, is it going to be hateable? No, no, maybe. No, I think it's cool. It's co it's called Doctored. Um, so we just okay. yeah. So people automatically would think you know because my name was Doc, but yeah. no, it's it's just cool. Like I I grew up with names like Deftones and stuff. Yeah, like that, which which is a sweet name. So we just came up. With Doctored the name. isn't a bad name at it's all. It's not the worst. No, no. and it, I feel it fits just with the whole pandemic thing yeah. as well. Like what's happening and we're a mix of every kind of genre that comes into play. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we don't have like everything set up rolling right now. We're actually just in the studio now. Right. Um, but yeah, look out for that. This summer we're gonna be coming in. 
Oh, that's awesome. That's so, exciting. I yeah, want to be yeah. in your band with you. Yeah, like, do you need you a tambourine? Yeah, yes, 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 yeah. we do. I was going to ask you. but you know, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming yeah, in. This has been so awesome. Much. I'm that's so awesome. excited for, well, to have you here and actually learn about you a little bit. Well, I've been talking you. with you for so long and I've been I like, know. who the fuck is he? I, I, I know. Like, <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm like, you know, can can I just please I get involved? I, I want to be like, you know, Joe Rogan or something like that. That's awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for awesome. listening and checking everything out again you can follow us on YouTube uh, it's Kick It With Chris Facebook we got Kick It With Chris Instagram at Kick It With Chris what else John? Spotify, Spotify and Apple Spotify Podcasts and Apple. is what we're gonna be on we're already on it? yep we are the fuck do I know okay just follow us and that's it okay <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much <laughs>